Hello students, I hope you must have got a bird's eye view of Chaucer in my previous video. Now let us continue with Chaucer's French period. In the French period, Chaucer wrote three important books. One is the Romaunt of Rose, the second is the Book of Duchess and the third is the Parliament of Fowl. The first one is the Romaunt of the Rose. This is a huge allegorical poem which is basically written by Chaucer into two parts. It's an allegorical romance. This poem is a very long flowing dream. Now, let me first tell you let me first tell you that what an allegory is. Allegory is a story or poem or a picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically moral or political one. In this poem, there is a long flowing dream, as I said, where the narrator sees a long dream in an enchanting garden beside a river bank. That is, the, the setting of the poem is on the bank of a river. Now, since it is on the bank of the river, it is obvious that the scenery uh, of the surroundings is very beautiful and nature is carved out so perfectly in this poem because uh, Chaucer simply loved nature. He really loved it and that's why he, he is very successful in, in giving a picturesque description of everything that is happening in the poem. It is a May morning where uh, Actually, nature is in conversation with him. The lover uh, enters the garden and then the narrator enters into a courtship with a beautiful lady and uh, the lady encourages and she is also discouraging the uh, uh, poet according to his moods. Uh, he, his, the variant moods actually like kindness, courtesy, which favor him, I mean fear and shame, uh, which repel it, are personified, personified in a very beautiful uh, way. The whole air in the poem, actually, mm, it, uh, it pervades with a aroma of uh, the perfume of love. Uh, fear and shame are personified here and there in his verses. Uh, there is an atmosphere of laughter, merrymaking, dancing, love, leisure and the pleasantries of a courtship. Now, uh, it is important to note here that uh, uh, the kind of courtship that is mentioned in this poem was the first, first of its kind. Uh, written by uh, a, a poet in an, 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 in an allegorical form. Earlier, uh, the idea of courtship was not at all there in any other books the way Chaucer presented it. And that is why it is very significant in the history of English literature. And that is why for uh, more reasons than one, we call Chaucer as the father of English literature. It is in fact important I feel for me to mention these things because this poem gave the further initiation for the other poets and writers to start up with courtly love as their theme. So you can say that Geoffrey Chaucer was a real trend setter in every sense of the term. He was the first inspiration for, their, for the writers to follow. Each and every 
a writer who followed him has experimented with this allegorical romance which he has so beautifully re reflected in his uh, work now uh, we are coming to the second work that is the parliament of fowls uh now this is called as a grand parliament of birds to celebrate uh the valentine's day uh that is the 14th february by choosing their mates all the birds make long love speeches in a very courtly fashion and they are actually selecting their mates or partners uh it is again a grandiose creation you can call by chaucer where uh, he has uh, represented again the modern idea of different kinds of love chaucer has made uh, the birds uh, they are mouth pieces some are advocating constant love others are advocating free love some are defending constancy some birds are advocating a uh, different kind of love again which was very upright and uh, it was during the chaucer's time breaking the rules of social world so he was uh, very modern in his thought and approach towards the society he was trying to change the society uh, through his poetry through his ideas trying to beat the old customs and traditions which ex existed in the middle ages or in the anglo saxon period so the whole debate in this parliament of fowls is very lively and chaucer has given sparks of humor and a slightly dramatic the poem is called as uh, the poem has uh, the a rhyme called as the royal rhyme royal form or the royal stanza the poem is in the seventh uh, line stanza the line is actually decasyllabic and the rhyme scheme is a b a b b c c now some of chaucer's lyrical poems are being lost some ballads and roundels are found uh, which show us that he is a great he has a great expertise over them one of his popular ballads flee from the press is a good example in this he praises the life of contentment far from the crowd or you can say the hustle bustle and grim life but it was quite clear that he was not comfortable with lyrician but he was at home with narration and that was his uh you can say yoner uh during his succeeding poems i would like to give you a short uh, very short uh, information about the book of duchess now uh, this is also one of the uh, you can say first uh, allegorical poem it is an elegy written on the death of blanche who was the duchess of lancaster uh, who was again the wife of uh, john or gaunt okay it is an octosyllabic couple uh, octosyllabic couplet and expresses the husband's grief and sings the praises of the duchess uh this is the best example of uh, uh, chaucer's allegorical poem so students i hope uh, i have cleared all your uh, doubts and i hope you enjoyed this uh, a uh, bit of information which i presented in my video today uh, i want you to feel free to ask me more questions 
it is a very encouraging gesture if you do so and thank you for uh, watching my video thank you once again